Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Wow, what an exciting and eventful week. I don't care what you say. It had its moments, right? Let's start with GME. On your screen is the one hour chart and I leave the pre and aftermarket sessions in there because they matter on meme stocks. So before the bell Monday, we registered a low of 16.88. By Tuesday, cleared 80 to 80.07, and by Friday, sadly finished at 22.21, down $5.46, or 19.73%, presumably because they sold 45 million shares and revenue fell sharply compared to the quarter a year earlier. And then after hours, GameStop lost another 91 cents or 4.10% to finish that session at 2130. Now let's look at the stats. Market cap, 6.8 billion. 50 day moving average, 12.29. 200 day moving average, 1404, we're well over that. So over the past week, GameStop still finished up 27.21%. Uh, over the past year, down only 2.89%. So where do you stand on GME, Uncle Frank? Well. This is not financial advice, and I am not a financial advisor. I will never tell you to buy, sell, or hold any security or cryptocurrency. But I think Roaring Kitty's tweet was a catalyst white swan for GME, AMC, and some other heavily shorted stocks. Now, having said that, I wish Roaring Kitty would have tweeted a little less, with a little more meaning behind the tweets, because now in, retros in retrospect, they seem like they're already losing punching power. I think GME could see a little more downside, but I still like the stock. Over a billion in cash, negative free cash flow, yes, with roughly 600 million in total debt, but I think Ryan diluted the right way. Instead of banging out of more stock under a dollar on a pre-split basis, like the fat pervert at AMC, I think Ryan is about to buy a new business, launch a new division, or maybe invest in a new business. Probably not a bankrupt gold mine just to bail out five short sellers of his stock, but something new and exciting. Revenue was down, but they're losing less money on lower revenue, so they seem to be running a tight ship. Ryan doesn't even take a salary, while AMC CEO is the highest paid in his industry. Ryan doesn't sell GME, he buys it. Ryan isn't a distress credit private equity parasite. He's an entrepreneur CEO. Speaking only for myself, if I were a short seller, GME would be the last stock I would short, and for good reason. When I look across the scrimmage line, I don't see people like Adam Aaron, Philip Lader, or Sean Goodman. I see people like Ryan Cohen and other obvious threats like Roaring Kitty. Ryan doesn't have an executive from Morgan Stanley running his board. He doesn't employ short sellers of his company as his chief investment bankers. He doesn't give away shares of the company for free as a dividend. He doesn't give millions of his company shares at an outrageous discount to distress credit hedge funds like Antara just to influence a shareholder vote then let them out of their lockup agreement early so they could make hundreds of millions of dollars at the shareholders' expense. In March of 2022, Ryan said short sellers are the dumb stormtroopers of the investing galaxy. That was for optimal projection. Then in November of that same year, he said he's not a fan of them either. Adam Aaron was famously quoted as saying, all that stuff you read about, market manipulation, fails to deliver, and billions of synthetic shares out there? That's not our problem. He's seen no evidence of that. While well, Adam spent at least $25 million on commercials that play only within the theaters, Ryan Cohen turned an online jewelry business into Chewy, becoming the number one online pet retailer in the world. As of this recording, GME is up 931.82% over the past five years, while AMC is down 93.3% under Adam, even though GME has also been targeted by the same short sellers and predatory short hedge funds. 
The obvious difference here is Adam Aaron works with our enemies. I truly hope you can see that by now. I may wait for a bottom on GME before I buy it again, but this would be the last stock I would ever short. If I were a short seller of any company's stock, I would choose Adam Aaron over anyone else to be my CEO. Now let's do AMC. Subscribers to my channel always know where I stand when it comes to this stock. I traded this one since before there ever were apes. I said three things repeatedly about it. One, we will not get a significant rally or short covering event in the stock without a black or white swan. A sudden, unexpected event that negatively impacts the short sellers directly. Specifically one that adversely impacts the leverage chain of positions held by our enemies, turning prime brokers against their best clients, the hedgies themselves, demanding money or portfolio rebalancing, AKA margin calls. I don't believe it'll be great financial results that will save us, nor will it be a magic mystery dividend or even another return to profitability, nor will it be the regulators or a bunch of new rules because new rules mean nothing when you don't enforce the ones on the books now. Now I do believe the CAT system, which goes live at the end of this month has potential and I'll give you my take on that later in the episode. For now, let's get back to number two. If we do get a significant rally, do you really believe after all that's happened, Adam will forget to dilute again? Of course he won't. He diluted twice within the first 48 hours of Keith Gill's tweet, leaving nearly a half billion in money that could have been used to reduce debt on the table. Who did that benefit most? Well, it wasn't the shareholders, you dumb shit fanboys. That's for sure. And then number three, I've said it again and again. Do you really think the limit up, limit down committee will forget to use the halt system to protect the interests of Wall Street? Well, they put on a halt display this past week that should have had regulators and the FBI kicking in doors and handcuffing people. But we all know that'll never happen. The financial media gave far more outrage and attention to Roaring Kitty's tweet than the tidal wave of halts. GME and AMC were halted nearly 40 times on Tuesday alone. No one in the media cared to mention it. AMC began the week pre-market with a low of 290, muscled its way through a jungle of dirty market makers, spoofing, share walls, hedge funds, hundreds of negative articles, shitty analysts reiterating sell recommendations with some slashing price targets all the way up to 1330. AMC finished the week at 440, down 24 cents or 5.17% on Friday, then after hours lost another 5 cents to end the bloodbath of manipulation at 435 or down another 1.14%. Now let's review the stats. Market cap, 1.301 billion. Glad to see it over a billion again. That's still under Q3 of 2023's revenue of 1.41 billion, the best third quarter in the company's history. Think about that. The friggin' market cap is under a recent quarter's top line revenue. So for the week, we finished up 51.2%. You know, not the worst thing in the world, right? 50 day moving average, 3.14. 200 day moving average, 5.21. We're going to have to be watching both of those. So now that it's Saturday morning, what are they talking about on Reddit sentiment and mention tracker over the past 24 hours? GameStop, still number one. Faraday, number two. Bitcoin, three. NVIDIA in the fourth position. The SPY in the fifth. Ethereum, sixth. AMC dropped to seventh but remains in the top ten. Now, the other day, I had a conversation with the ball buster of the Bayou, the Dershowitz of D-Block, the alligator in your theater, the Common Sense Investor, a.k.a. CSI. He pointed out something very interesting to me. On Tuesday, it was reported that GameStop and AMC 
drove five billion in trades on Robinhood alone in a single day. CSI mentioned that if that's true, then other brokers probably had a huge day too, like TD Ameritrade, Fidelity, Moomoo, Weeble, and E-Trade, which prompts an interesting question. All these shares that were sold to investors, were they all legitimate? Which got me thinking, how long before AMC and other heavily shorted stocks end up back on the threshold list? Who knows? Adam Aaron might be forced to make another phone call to the exchange. Now, for those of you that think the fun is over for now, I've got a theory that might cheer you up a bit. I've said in previous videos that I'm a big supporter of the CAT system. I think it means tighter rules going forward, which is a good thing. But I don't believe Gary Gensler has permission from the White House or other power players on Wall Street to suddenly launch a new consolidated audit trail system that will expose all the activities of the bad actors, putting hedge funds, prime brokers, and even clearing firms at risk, not in an election year. Gary's been busy terrorizing the crypto space instead of enforcing the securities rules and laws on Wall Street. On Wednesday, unusual whales posted. Yesterday, the former SEC chair said that Roaring Kitty manipulated GameStop shares by tweeting memes. Not a word from this guy about the activities of market makers and predatory short hedge funds. This is the same asshole that brought a case against Ripple XRP. Yet today, Senator Tommy Tuberville is trading options on companies he legislates and Nancy Pelosi's portfolio hit an all-time high. But silence from the current SEC chair. Okay, so not a word from Gary about Roaring Kitty's tweet or the thousand halts, right? But, 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 ever since Trump's Republican team, namely Devin Nunes, has been making such a stink in the press about the dirty short sellers, that may have invited the Democrats onto the battlefield, which in this example is Wall Street. Gary Gensler may actually have the green light to go after people like Kenny Griffin, a huge Republican supporter and donor, especially with the Bill Wang Archegos trial kicking off in New York. And who knows how much dirty shit is going to drop out of that courtroom. Now ahead of Cat going live, I've learned FINRA has been running around fining everybody like wild. Maybe that's because they don't want the cat exposing a bunch of dirty shit that's usually permitted on Wall Street. Check this out. FINRA fines spiked 63% last year in 2023. FINRA fines Morgan Stanley 1.6 million for muni violations. FINRA fines M1 Finance 850,000 for violations regarding use of social media influencer program. FINRA fines Merrill Lynch 825,000 over order execution supervision lapses. FINRA fines SoFi 1.1 million. FINRA fines RBC Capital Markets 15,000. FINRA dings Oppenheimer 500,000 for supervisory failures. I can't promise anything guys, but I think beginning next week, we'll begin to see the after effects of all the manipulation that occurred this past week. And that may spark volatility in the meme space again. Stay tuned, a platoon. And a hat tip to my gold and silver bugs from early this morning. Gold and copper are breaking records. Silver is at an 11 year high. I noticed I know some of you don't care about the fundamentals, but I will take good box office news over bad every time. No matter what the uncertain future holds for the company, I will always prefer we face it with explosive top line revenue, which we need like the desert needs the rain to pay this management team we have. From this morning, if heads for $31.5 million box office opening. 
Now, guys, I want you to pay close attention to the timing on this article. Goldman Sachs put out a note on Wednesday, but Reuters claims they didn't see it until Friday or didn't publish it until Friday. Check it out. Hedge fund squeeze from short bets amid surging meme stocks, Goldman Sachs says. London Reuters, not New York. Hedge funds ditched bearish stock bets early this week at some of the highest rates in three years as U.S. meme stocks rallied sharply. A Goldman note seen by Reuters on Friday showed. The note, published on Wednesday, just before the rally faded, said hedge funds drop positions on the most actively shorted stocks tracked by a Goldman Sachs index. These funds also piled into long bets just as retail investor favorites GameStop and AMC soared on the return of social media account Roaring Kitty, a central player in the 2021 meme stock rally. Most hedge fund short covering when investors have to buy back stock borrowed for bearish bets came from stocks tracked in the Goldman Sachs index. The bank's notes said this index includes AMC and GameStop, according to Yahoo Finance. The index, which rose by over 5% during the week, was up just 0.5% on Friday, LSEG data showed. Systematic hedge funds, whose algorithms catch market trends, piled into long positions on Monday, while losing about 1.1% by Tuesday, the cohort's second worst day of the year, Goldman Sachs Prime Brokerage, which tracks the hedge funds, said in the note. However, the group remains up 11.6% for the year to May 14th, the Goldman note showed. Hedge funds taking long and short bets based on fundamental factors were down 0.3% on Wednesday, but up 7% for the year so far. GameStop and AMC fell for a second straight session on Thursday as the Roaring Kitty excitement died down. You see how that worked? So what are the hedgies doing on the long side? Good question from the street. World's biggest hedge fund boosts its stake in NVIDIA stock. From Bloomberg, hedge funds pump up exposure to NVIDIA, cut AMD. From Benzinga, NVIDIA tops hedge fund buys as interest in AI stocks fuel market gains. But this may not be a slam dunk. From Barron's, NVIDIA stock couldn't close at a record high ahead of earnings. And from tip ranks, NVIDIA stock, is it a buy at 71.3x earnings? And another headline, NVIDIA stock price, long-term decline ahead as customers turn to competition. And finally, from Seeking Alpha, NVIDIA Q1 preview, competition is now real. A rating downgrade, NVIDIA Corp faces fierce competition from tech giants like Google, Meta, Intel, and AMD, impacting its market share. So NVIDIA's earnings are coming out Wednesday after the bell. Uncle Frank, what are you rooting for? Oh, I'll tell you what Uncle Frank is rooting for. He's easy to figure out. I want them to get rug pulled on their long positions, especially NVIDIA. I want them to be suddenly attacked by spikes in the stock prices of their short positions. I want wealthy individuals and institutions to continue to yank money from them, starving them for liquidity. Did you know the hedges have had 22 consecutive months of net outflows? That's because you listen to the facts on this channel instead of the beat-offs who may be paid to tell you to support Adam Aaron and reverse stock splits we never needed to do. I hope inflows, meaning money sent to the hedges, dries up. If there's more uncertainty and volatility, 
people will move money away from the hedgies into less risky options. I want more and more regulatory crackdowns like CAT, even if they don't follow the rules, anything that makes their day harder or more challenging is good for us. And I want the politicians that cover for them to turn on them, to start blaming them for the problems in the economy. I want them to blame the hedgies for too much systemic risk, especially in the basis trade. I want the politicians to start blaming them for bank failures. Why do you think Kenny helped Steve Mnuchin bail out that crap bank in New York? I want the primes to turn on them because of the extreme risk they present to the system. And my highest desire is that it all happens at the same time. Stay tuned. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.